Hey there, welcome back to my channel. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. So today's topic is a very simple topic. I will give you a total overview about the HCL secretion in stomach so that you are not going to miss out on any marks, including how does the parietal cell looks like and what is the difference between the active and the secreting stage of the parietal cell. Okay, so without wasting much time, let's start the topic. So the learning objectives for this session are we will see the structure of the gastric gland first. Then we will understand what is the difference between the active and the resting state of the parietal cell. And then we will go into the mechanism of HCL secretion with little bit of applied aspects. So what is the structure of the gastric gland? So this is how the structure of the gastric gland is. Here we can see the gastric gland is covered by a mucus layer. And what is it which secretes this mucus layer? This mucus layer is secreted by these surface mucus cells. Okay. Underneath the surface mucus cells, we have the mucus neck cell, which belong to the stem cell compartment. We all know what is the stem cell compartment means. And then we have these three very important cells. The first is the parietal cell. Parietal cell is having two important functions. One is it helps in the secretion of the HCL. Second is it also helps in the secretion of the intrinsic factor. Now, this intrinsic factor is very important for the purpose of absorption of vitamin B12. Then we have the second cell which is called as the ECL cell. What do we understand by the ECL? ECL is nothing but enterochromaffin-like cell. Enterochromaffin-like cell. Now, this enterochromaffin-like cell is the one which secretes histamine. And then we have the chief cells. The chief cell is the one which helps in the secretion of this very important enzyme which is called as pepsinogen. Remember, for the activation of the pepsinogen, we need the presence of HCL. That means if HCL is not there, pepsinogen is not activated and the process of digestion in the stomach is going to be suffering. So, in any disorder wherein there is lack of parietal cell, there will be no production of the HCL as well as there is no production of the intrinsic factor of castle. Hence, there will be vitamin B12 deficiency as well as no HCL leading to some uh, abnormality with the digestion. So, this is how the structure of the gastric gland looks like. Next, let's see what is the meaning of this active and resting stage of the parietal cell. The one which you are seeing on this side, this is the resting state of the parietal cell. The one which you are seeing on this side, this is the active state of the parietal cell. So, what is the difference between these two? What the most important thing that we will have to understand here is that, see this is the apex of the cell. From the apex of the cell, we can see that the cell membrane of the parietal cell is invaginating like this. Okay, Invagination is there and this invagination is giving rise to a structure which is called as canaliculi. And this invagination part is what is called as the canalicular membrane. Okay, this is the canaliculi, this is the canalicular membrane. Apart from that, we can see lots of mitochondria. Why there are lots of mitochondria? Because HCL production is an energy driven process and we need mitochondria which help in the synthesis of ATP. We can also see the Golgi apparatus and then we can see these important structures which are called as tubulo vesicles. What are they called? They are called as tubulo vesicles. Okay. Now, what is going to happen when the cell becomes active? When I say the cell becomes active, I mean to say when the cell is ready to secrete the HCL. This canaliculi and this canalicular membrane of this canaliculi is going to fuse with these tubulo vesicular structures. So, what is going to happen? The surface area of the canalicular membrane is going to increase. Okay. The surface area of the canalicular membrane is going to increase. Not only that, if we look into this diagram, this is the diagram which shows us the resting stage of the parietal cell. And this is the one which shows us the active stage or the secreting stage of the parietal cell. And this is the invagination which is coming deep down resulting in the formation of an canaliculi and this canaliculi is opening into the canalicular lumen okay and then we have this tubulo vesicular structures and these tubulo vesicular structures are having one very important pump in their membrane which is called as hydrogen potassium ATPase pump 
okay apart from that the parietal cell is having these three important receptors one is called as an m3 receptor second is called as an h2 receptor and the third one is called as the cckb receptors okay the m3 receptor is for acetylcholine or for the parasympathetic stimulation whenever there is a parasympathetic stimulation acetylcholine is released and it is going to go and bind to this m3 receptors h2 receptor is for the histamine and histamine is coming from where histamine is coming from ecl cell enterochromaffin like cell and then the cckb receptor is for a hormone which is called as gastrin when any one of these binds to this receptors the cell becomes active and now it has to secrete hcl so when the cell becomes active what is going to happen is that these tubulovesicular structures which contain the hydrogen potassium atipase in their membrane they are going to bind to these canaliculi once they bind to this canaliculi of course there is going to be an increase in the surface area of the canaliculi apart from that the hydrogen potassium atipase which was present in the membrane of the tubulovesicles is going to get incorporated into the canalicular membrane and this hydrogen potassium atipase is also called as proton pump because this is the one which is going to pump h plus into the canaliculi which is going to combine with the cl minus this leading to the formation of hcl so this is the difference between the active and resting state of the parietal cells which we usually forget when we write an answer for mechanism of secretion of hcl okay one more very important applied aspect i will tell you here is that there are drugs which can block this h2 receptor and these are called as h2 blockers and when h2 receptor is blocked this is going to reduce the acid secretion one very good example of h2 blocker is what is called as ranitidine okay these are the group of drugs which can be used in hyperacidity and peptic ulcer disease now this is the mechanism of secretion of hcl all of us all of you also would know this okay then very important here is that this is the gastric lumen that means this is the apical part of the cell and this side is the interstitial fluid and the blood side and this is called as the basolateral part of the cell the canalicular membrane is having this pump or the proton pump which is called as hydrogen potassium atipase it is also having a potassium channel as well as a chloride channel the basolateral membrane is having sodium potassium atipase wherein free sodium is pumped outside and two potassium is going to enter inside now this two potassium which is going to enter inside is going to go out via this potassium channel which is present in the apical part of the parietal cell first and foremost thing carbon dioxide produced in the cell is going to combine with the water in the presence of an enzyme which is called as carbonic anhydrase do not miss any point in this even the enzyme is also important that leads to the formation of h2co3 h2co3 is a very unstable compound it immediately breaks down into hco3 minus and h plus now this h plus is pumped via hydrogen potassium atipase pump for every h plus which is pumped into the canaliculi one potassium enters back into the lumen and even this potassium is going to go out via the potassium channel which is present in the apical portion of the parietal cell and remember this pumping of the h plus via the hydrogen potassium atipase pump which is also called as a proton pump is an atp driven process it requires a lot of energy now what happens to hco3 minus HCO3- is pumped into the interstitial space and from there it is going to enter into the bloodstream. And for exchange of HCO3-, one chloride ion is pumped inside. And this exchanger is called as chloride bicarbonate exchanger. This is the one which is called as a chloride bicarbonate exchanger. And the chloride which has entered inside the cell, it will be sent out into the gastric lumen via the chloride channel now this chloride which is come here it is going to 
combine with the H plus resulting in the formation of HCl. One more applied aspect I will tell you. We have drugs which can block this hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. And these drugs are called as proton pump inhibitors. Like we have drugs, you might have heard about these. Omeprazole, okay, rabiprazole, all these group of drugs. Very effective drugs in reducing the acidity or the HCl secretion. Second important point that we are supposed to remember here is that for every H plus ion which is being secreted into the canaliculi, okay, there is one HCO3 minus which is entering into the blood. So what is going to happen? When is it that the HCl secretion is going to increase? HCl secretion is increasing whenever we take the food inside. So whenever we take the food inside, what is going to happen to the level of the bicarbonate in the blood? The level of bicarbonate in the blood is going to be increasing. And this is what is called as postprandial alkaline tide. Okay. So what is postprandial alkaline tide? Postprandial alkaline tide is nothing but an increase in the pH of the blood. And this is a very slight increase in the pH of the blood. Why? Because of addition of the bicarbonate which is occurring into the blood. So remember all these things when you are writing an answer with respect to mechanism of HCl secretion. I hope you have understood the difference between the resting stage and the parite and the active stage or the secreting stage of the parietal cell and this entire mechanism don't miss out any enzyme don't miss out any channel in the parietal cell and also at last mentioned regarding the proton pump inhibitors h2 blockers and also postprandial alkaline type hope this video was helpful for you in understanding the mechanism of hcl secretion if you have understood this kindly hit the like button and for those people who have not subscribed to my channel Please do subscribe. See you again.